Okay, this is a quick video to walk you through how to use a uh, syringe filter setup, typically used for things that are, uh, you know, less than 100 mils, anything more than that, maybe a vacuum filtration flask will work. Um, it's just a plastic syringe, uh, can be either a lure type fitting or just a press fit like this, this is fine. And then you need your actual filter holder assembly here. So this, this come in different shapes and sizes, but ones we typically have look like this. So you just undo this lock ring at the top, and then this flips right out of here. So here's the base. And this is actually two parts. There's this disc, which just has slats in it. This is not directional. So this just pops right down into the base like that. There's no keyed section, so it just rotates freely in there. And then this piece, you can see there are these keyed sections on either side that match the notches on uh, the base here. So what we're gonna do is use a pair of forceps. And you're gonna grab a 0.45 micron filter. You can do this with gloves, or you can do this with your hands. Just be sure not to touch the filter uh, with your fingers, or anything dirty for that matter. Take this filter. Uh, if it's the same on both sides, it doesn't matter. There's no directionality. If there are grids on one side, then the grid face goes up. You'll just place that in here. And then the important, one of the most important part is just making sure these notches here line up well with the notches on the base. I like to take a dab of clean water here, DI water, and just wet that. That'll help keep it in place when you drop this piece right on top. Notice that the red silicon o-ring then seats in there nicely and makes a, a liquid seal against the filter itself. Then you'll take your lock ring, drop it over the top, rotate it backwards a few turns or to the left to get the thread started, then go right. And then you want this to be fairly tight um, to make sure you compress that o-ring sufficiently um, so that it doesn't leak. Now you can just press fit this on. If this is a press fit, notice that these are threaded for a lure fitting. So if you have lure, even better, they're just more expensive. So that's how you assemble this thing. To filter this, if you're doing this uh, in the lab rather than in the field, then you've already collected your sample. This has been refrigerated at 4C. It was collected this afternoon. I'm going to take this. This has already been triple DI rinsed, so we can assume this is clean and dry. I'm going to dip just the tip of this into the bottom here, and I'm going to draw up about five or eight mils. This is maybe 10. Don't need quite that much, but this will be fine. Then I'm going to take the rest in up to the full volume of the syringe, or any volume that you would use, and I'm going to fill it with air. I'm just going to gently rotate it like this. And so this is my pre-rinse, so that I can rinse my actual tool with the sample. Uh, that minimizes any dilution from leftover DI, uh, and it makes sure that I can coat the object with my sample itself. I'll take this, expel this into the waste feature back here. I'm going to do one more small draw of just a couple mils here, and I'm going to push this on, and I will pre-rinse my filter rig with just a couple of mils. That makes sure I get a nice uh, sample coating on my filter and on my uh, apparatus so there's no cross-contamination or dilution. Okay, one more draw of water, and now I'm going to draw in slight excess of what I want to filter. So I'm trying to filter into 15 milliliter falcon tubes to run ICP. So I'm going to pull up a full 30 here. You may not need that full 30, um, but if you leak, then you will. And I'll take my 15 milliliter falcon tube, undo this cap. Again, be careful you don't contaminate this. Make sure you've labeled this. Um, attach your filter here and then make sure you put the spout of the filter directly in the center and you can do this in a rack a test tube rack or you can just do it directly like this and then start depressing and notice I'm filling I'm not getting much leaking at the top if you get a lot of leaking up here at this part that means you probably didn't tighten it enough or you don't have your notches aligned uh, and so there's a small step so if you're leaking more than you're filtering, um, you probably want to restart this over. So I'll do this until I've 
completely filled this. It may take quite a bit of force, depending on how dirty your sample is. And then I will take my concentrated trace metals nitric acid. Be careful here if you're not using gloves for this step. And then you want to add a few drops until you have reached uh, less than pH 2. Um, and remember, this is filtering only for ICP. You would not do this for alkalinity or IC measurements. So I'm going to just take and dip this and have a quick look at what the pH is. That was four drops, and I can see that I'm down here in and around the one to two range. So this is good to go. And lastly, just remember to take all of your samples after you filter them and they're well labeled. Make sure the caps are tight and then store this at less than four degrees C.